You're listening to the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill McIntyre, and it's time for this week's Long Island News, the show that talks to newsmakers from Nassau and Suffolk County that matter to Long Island and Long Islanders like you. So each week, we'll have a conversation about issues that affect all of us. I live on Long Island just like you, and I want to know more about where my tax dollars are going, and I want to know more about the people making the big decisions that affect all of us. Well, this week, we're going straight to the top. But what are the latest happenings at the Nassau County Police Department? How are they dealing locally with issues that affect everyone nationally? And what's being done to fight crime and other policing issues here on Long Island? And it's my pleasure to welcome back to our show and back in the studio live with us, Nassau County Commissioner of Police, Mr. Patrick J. Ryder. Welcome. Nope. Welcome back. Thank you for having me back. Always uh, good to be back in the alma mater. This yeah, is my home. Right, that's right. And you teach here too, don't I you? I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. What What do you teach? I teach criminal justice courses every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 7 a.m. It's a, a early start to the day for some of our students, yeah, but yeah. they do very well and they um, it's it's a lot of fun teaching. It that's, really is. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's got to be it's got to be fun. I went back to school late. I was... Me too. I was older, older. And... Um, I, I never had so much fun in my life. I really I, did. I got my master's at age 40, and, and then I came back and started doing adjunct. And uh, I enjoy teaching in the same classrooms that I went to back in 1980 is when I attended right. Nassau. Right. 80, 81, 82, 83, 84. It was supposed to be a two-year school for me. It didn't work out that well. <laughs> but I got it done. I got out, got on the police department. And later in life, I, I, got, I got the bug to go back, got yeah. my bachelor's, and I said, let me go get my master's at LIU. Uh, great criminal justice ma- uh, program in homeland security management, mm. and the the honor to come back and teach at such a great school like Nassau Community College. And you know all these young kids out there that are thinking about where they're going to go in life yeah. and not sure. Start off at the community college, save a lot of your money for those first ter- two years, and when you finish that degree is the school that you finish at, not where you start at. I call it the best kept secret on Long Island. Mm -hmm. I really do. Um, And we have something in common. I actually taught at the school too, but I did voiceover voiceover stuff and it was so much fun. It really was. Good kids. I brought a little recorder in so everybody, we actually did commercials with everybody in the class. I had them pick something and, you know, uh, yeah, it was was a lot of fun. Well, when you were last on our show, uh, that was last February and over the last year, You've told Newsday that major crimes increased 41% in Nassau in 2022 compared to 2021. We're looking at property crimes, grand larceny, burglaries, vehicle mm-hmm. thefts. Can you talk a little about this? Um, sure. It looks like, uh, just from the, st- the statistics, that it's not heading in the right direction. But So let, let me give you how it works. So 19, 20, 21, Nassau County's safest county in America, three years in a row. Crime was extremely low, record numbers across the board. We go into 2022, and we finished the year in homicides, the lowest amount of homicides in the history of this department. We had six murders in Nassau County proper. We had an additional seven in our villages. But the six is what we police, the areas that we we have our numbers come from. So we broke homicide records. We broke all of our violent crimes like rape, criminal sexual acts, sexual abuse. All of that went down. What climbed was property crime. Mm. Our burglaries went up uh, 55%, our residential burglaries. But I I have to emphasize that we used to do about 1,400 to 1,500 residential burglaries going back about five to eight years ago. We started our intelligence-led policing program. We started a burglary pattern team. Last year, we finished the year at, uh, two years ago, we finished the year at 292 residential burglaries. So we used to do 1,500, 292. So like the stock market, you get a correction. Mm. Our numbers spiked up to 455. The problem is I could have cut that in half easily if we kept people in jail. Bail reform uh, hurt us. Okay. And again, I, I am not the guy that wants, I'm not knocking right, reform. Right. Reform we, is a good thing. We've, we've already, had this we've conversation. We've talked about it. Yep. yep, yep, yep. We know why it needs Rich to kid, happen. Rich kid, poor kid shouldn't be out of jail. Right. The whole bail issue. Yeah. But when you get burglars that come from South Americans, called mm. the South American Theft Group, They come organized, Chile, Venezuela, Colombia. And they come up here, they go to Queens, and they're told, go to the north shore of Nassau County. Uh, And they go into Nassau County, they commit a burglary. If we catch them on the second time, or maybe maybe even catch them on the first time, we're going to arrest them, we're going to bring them in, they're going to get an appearance ticket. They're going to get out the next day. They walk. They're undocumented in this country. They came in here illegally. 
Right. And, and now they're, they're going out and they're walking out. This is not the people at, that are down on the border trying to come and you right. know get a better life here in, in the United States. This is a syndicate. Yeah, it's an organized group. And, they, and they, they're walking out the door. So giving the judges that discretion back, which is what we're trying to fight for, that they say, hey, no, you know what? He should stay here, yeah. you know, or, or else put up a st- substantial amount of bail that we know that's going to make you come back to get your money back. Right. So that hurt us. Larcenies hurt us when they, they steal at the mall. Our number one crime is our grand larcenies it, through the roof. Like grand larcenies in 2021, we did 3,200. In 2022, we did 4,584. Wow. It was a 43% jump. And what what, what encompasses grand larceny? So I go into, into the... The mall, I grab, you know, five or 10 shirts off the, the so rack. Sh- shoplifting. Over $1,000 shoplifting. That's a grand larceny. They get an appearance ticket at the station house. They don't even go see a judge. Really? Yeah. They, there's no, you, here's your here's your appearance ticket. You have a nice day. We'll Hopefully, we'll see you in court in three days or a month, whatever the return date is. They don't show up. Mm. When they don't show up, we call them. The court calls them and says, Hey, you got to show up or else the judge is going to have to issue a warrant for you. Right. All right, I'll be at my next court date. Don't show up for the next court date. And then the, the warrant comes out. It's a problem for us. Right. We're chasing our tail. And they know they're not going to. And, and then I'm not going to go look for the that person who's wanted in, in Queens or, or Harlem or Brooklyn. Or South America, for us, that matter. Or South America, right. <laughs> right. So it, it, it became an investment on our part to try to keep it down. We kept it down. We did very well. Mm. I'm going to bet we win the safest, Mer- safest community in America again for a fourth year. Mm-hmm. And I say that because even though our property crimes are on up and our stolen cars, because 90% of my stolen cars are people are leaving their keys in the car and they refuse to lock the door. The bad guys know this. I was going to ask you yeah, about you, this. You, you put the milk out, the cat's going to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Lock your car, take your keys in your house. Help me help you. Yeah, exactly. And we did that. We did an educational. Yeah. We went out to all the communities. We pamphleted it. We did some stuff on the news. The county exec was putting out messaging. And what we did was we were up about 240% in stolen cars. We ended the year up 72%. I, that's a victory for me. And yeah, I was right. able to turn that. This year, I'm down 40% in stolen cars right now. So right. we got it in the right direction. We got some great federal prosecutions that are going on. We went after and arrested some people that we were able to keep them because they crossed the line. When they run and they flee and they hurt people, now that's a more serious that's crime a, that you don't get back. Okay, different deal, right, right? Raise the age. If you raise, they used to be 16 and under, right? Was was considered a juvenile under 16. Now it's under 18. Uh, so a 17-year-old kid that comes here from Newark, and that's where 90% of my cars are getting recovered in Newark. Really? They come here, they steal the car, they go back to Newark with the car, they park it, they leave it, they wait, it cools off, and then they'll go grab it a couple of days later and then try to sell it. We're on top of it. We recover these vehicles. Newark has been working with us now, and we've made a difference in, in reducing that already this year, 37% down. But like I said, it, they they rate you on the violence in your communities. Uh-huh. I just left major city chiefs down in Washington, D.C. We, I'm, I co-chair the intelligence commanders for the for the country, and we talked. We looked around the room and homicides and everything else. The lowest number of homicides that I saw was about 47 in one one of these cities. Most of them are running around 300, 400, 500, 600, 700 homicides. Mm-hmm. We had six last year in Nassau County. Okay. And we have a 1.5 million population. So the men and women in the police department do a great job, supported by our county executive, is mm-hmm. a great supporter, and our legislators, both sides. Right. Republicans and Dems, they all support the men and women in the police department. We go at it, different views, but at the end of the day, we want all the same thing, quality of life here in Nassau County. Yeah, I think, you know what, you, you just mentioned it. it's an important thing. We go at it, you know. Uh, we don't seem to be able to do that civilly anymore, and and that's a real detriment. It really is. You know, nobody wants to talk about this. About Yeah, but if we don't talk about it, it's not going anywhere. Um, I, I read a... a, a you know, we want to talk about uh, guns. Now, you've heard the latest news about Smithtown is going to go out and get some armed I, yep. guards for. Uh, what, what What's your take on that? Is that so? When you look at school safety, you know, and, and most school shootings are over in three to five minutes. Done, yeah. right? So the shooter goes in, does what he needs to do, and many times it's self inflicted. They they kill themselves. Response time in Nassau County. I'm sorry, most shootings are over in in. Uh, Two, two to two, two to five minutes. Response time in Nassau County to an emergency call, like a school shooting, would right. be three to five minutes. 
So we close the gap. We close the gap with things like the Rave app that we've given to all our schools. We close the gap with training and education. We do uh, what we call SEPTIT, crime prevention through environmental design. We teach the schools. We work with the schools. We've done assessments at all 450. And I will tell you this, and for all those superintendents and principals that are listening out there, they have never been so engaged with the police department that, as they have in the last five years. I, I have a great relationship with all of them. We, we sometimes lock heads about certain things, but when it comes to safety of the children mm. and parents listen to me, they are all engaged about doing what's right for your children. Our Homeland Security office, um, our, our Lieutenant Conley, who goes out there and addresses all of them, everybody has his cell phone. Every one of them have my cell phone number. And when there's a threat that goes on, we have a school desk. We're, we're making sure we're notifying all the schools in the surrounding area. This is why there's a lockdown or a lockout, whatever right. it is. And, and they get to make their choices on what, how they want to proceed. Um, but with hiring armed guards, um, th- those who happen, happen to be the group that got hired are actually personal friends of mine, retired Nassau County guys. Okay. And, and a great group. That school feels that they want to have an armed guard on the premise. Well, that's what the school wishes to do. And, huh. and, and many of the schools here in Nassau County, they can do the same. I believe Massapequa does something similar. Hmm. But, but at the end of the day, if you have a guard that stands in front of the building, we're not going to stand there with an assault rifle and stare down right. your children, right? Right, right? So if I'm the shooter, I usually make sure I know my environment. They usually come from the school. They, they've watched the, the, the environment. They'll watch to see if that guy is standing in front, and that's the first person they'll shoot. Because you're not standing there with your hand on your gun staring everybody down. Yeah, right. They'll come up and shoot them. So I won't go into what they do out, out there, but mm-hmm. I will tell you this. They, they got a pretty good plan on, on how they protect the school um, and not to educate, you know, those potential shooters out there. Um, but we, they do a pretty good job. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's up to the school what they want to do. In Nassau County, we just, like we do with all of our our, our, our mosques uh, and our temples and, 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 and churches, we, we ask them, whatever you're going to hire, just let us know. Let us work with them. Let yeah. us make sure that when we get there, they know, get out. It's our yeah, time, yeah, and, and yeah. we we've we've had a good relationship. That's, like that. that's, a, that's always been the uh, um, you know the kind of iffy thing when you say the good guy with a gun, you know, and and yeah, the good guy with a gun. But when the police show up, they just see three guys standing there with guns. Correct. There's no sign on your forehead that says I'm the good guy. He's the perpetrator. You know, um, and I, I think maybe people who are armed should be more aware of that than anybody. Yeah. So so now you know with the 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 um, ruling in the United States Supreme Court, everybody can now purchase a, a f- sidearm. The state came down with other restrictions. Mm-hmm. We're trying to deal with those restrictions, but uh, people now can get yeah. carry firearms. Yeah. Safety, safety, safety. Lock and secure your weapon when it's left at home by itself. And if you're going to carry it, make sure if you're going to pull that weapon, you better made you yeah. made that decision. I'm in self-defense mode right now, and I'm trying to defend myself or another. Yeah. Otherwise, keep it in your holster and keep it covered. Yeah, that's a. You know, it's always <laughs> been it's always been a conundrum when I think about it. That when, okay, so you have a gun. It's supposed to be in a lockbox, and your ammo is supposed to be somewhere else, right? Right. So now you got a guy breaking into your house, and he makes it to your bedroom in thirty seconds. How much of a deterrent is that gun? Well, it, unless you throw the safe at him. Well, if the licensee <laughs> you know? is home, they're right. allowed to keep the gun loaded in the house, right? So okay. if I'm not home, we ask you to try to separate for safety reasons. Yeah. Again, yeah. you don't want your, your son bringing home a friend and next thing you know, they find their way into dad's bedroom and they find dad's gun yeah, and yeah. we've had That's too many right. tragic deaths because of that. Well, and I think of a guy that wants to take his gun and go to a range and he wants to shoot. Now, he's got to carry that in a locked box. Correct. And what if he gets carjacked? You know, there's there's issues all along the way, and it's like, oh man. So you have the secu- the safe zones, as the uh, state came out with other sensitivity zones. If I went into the city, I can carry my firearm as a John Q citizen, right? If I got into the Times Square area, that's a safe zone. You can't you can't carry oh. it. So now they suggest you leave it locked in your vehicle. They're stealing cars left and right out yeah. there. That's the last place. Yeah. And when I spoke to Houston. And I spoke to, you know, Texas and a couple other places out there. They said the number one crime that they have is guns that are stolen with the car. So the cars are stolen and, you know, they carry their guns out there, free free zone. Yeah. And their cars are getting stolen with their handgun or their rifle that was left in the car. Mm-hmm. A gun should stay on your person or it's locked and secured at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that th- those are tough. Those are tough things that you know to get through. But the other thing about like the bail law, I I, I think that the uh, you know the system is working the way it's supposed to. I think they jumped the gun when they changed the law and put it out there. And that was our first question here when talking to people is that why do we pay judges? You guys just went right the word, around them. The word judge and judges. Bingo. Judge. They yeah. judge people. And, it, you know, it just you went right over his head and he doesn't matter anymore. That's crazy. Um, that's part of the, you know. Um, I got a, 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 a statistic today that um, made me shake my head. Um, 44,000, maybe 200, I think, um, gun deaths in the United States in 2020. But 54% of those were suicides. Mm. Mental health is... Because everybody's talking about the school shootings. That's what grabs our attention. But that's not the preponderance of... Um, of Mental health is a huge problem in our country today. And when you look at at the, the number of deaths that occurred, and you just gave a statistic there, we have, because of the pandemic, we have so many people that are now homeless, living on the streets, because of, you know... The cost of living in, in, in this country has gone astronomical and, and it gotten difficult that many people, again, they're not getting the treatment they could mm. or should. I'm not, you know, I'm not the mental health expert. And that's why we have in Nassau County, we have a mobile crisis team that comes out with us and they do an outstanding job. They're the experts. That's the one that should handle talking to that guy. Right. Once the gun is away, once the knife is away, then you could step in. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, we recognize that. But when you look at suicides in, in, in the United States, it, the reason and it, it's on the rise is, is because of the mental health issues. And, and so many people that are in depression and the drug use in this country has, has gone out of control. Finally, they came down on Big Pharma and, and hit them with some heavy, heavy fines. We've, we've gone after the pharmacist. We've gone after the drug dealers. There'll be something new tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I promise you, yeah. there will be. Yeah. Right. Yep. Oh, it's a business. And that yeah. drug dealer in South America who's sending up the fentanyl up here did it for a reason. If my heroin's okay, I can make it better with fentanyl. And if I make it better, you need it more. If mm. you need it more, you're going to do what you got to do to get that addiction fed. Yeah. And if it comes to killing somebody or committing crimes, yeah. that drives yeah. the numbers. I think there was a, uh, <laughs> there was a time like uh, some of the fentanyl was coming from uh, China. And... Um, and I remember hearing this kind of on the street and, and some in the newspapers. But all of a sudden, that supply of fentanyl was a hundred times more powerful mm-hmm. than the one before it. You know, uh, it's, it, it's a tough question. You, you, I, I'm talking just about people, whether they're addicted or whether they're not. Um, dealers, I guess, that were putting that stuff together and would sell it on the streets here had no clue. Um, they were they were basically doing what they always do, uh, which nevertheless is illegal. I mean, we're not you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that change in ingredients was responsible for a lot of deaths. Oh, addictions and death. You know, and the other thing people don't realize is that um, you know if you're thinking about trying cocaine, this is just a little thing to park in the back of your mind. Some people die the first time they try it. They have a reaction that kills them. Immediately. Um, so think about that when you <laughs> think about every kid going to college today and they get into their dorm room. And if, you know, it's it's the anxiety's taking over and someone says, hey, I got a Xanax, man. Mm-hmm. Try, try the Xanax. It's prescribed. It's good. If I take it, you could take it, right? In that Xanax, it's, it's a crushed pill. It was crushed, sprinkled with fentanyl and then put repressed and sold. Right, right. That kid takes it. One pill, one kill. That's the, the model that the DEA has been coming out. One pill, one kill. Educate your children going away to college. Uh, look, we, yeah. we're, we know they're not perfect children, <laughs> and they're, they're going to have a couple of beers and whatever, mm-hmm. and they're going to make some mistakes. But you can't come back from that mistake yeah, if yeah. That, that fentanyl kills you. There, that's are, the there scary are mistakes, thing. and then there are fatal mistakes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I'm supposed to do this probably 10 minutes ago, but you're listening to this week's Long Island News on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill McIntyre, and my guest today is Nassau County Commissioner of Police, Mr. Patrick J. Ryder. As I was sitting home last night, I was just making one-line notes. I would like to <laughs> add, you know, I want to ask this, I want to ask that. Now, we had at one time an assault weapons ban. Mm-hmm. And I know people argue about what are, what is assault weapons, what is it? I'm just talking about these guns that they've been using in school shootings. Um, 
the numbers were, were apparently lower then when we had the ban than they are now that we don't have the ban. Do you think that that's a good idea to put that back in, into place or try to get that back in place? Bad people commit crimes with guns. Bad people. Good people don't commit crimes with guns. The access to guns, if cut off to the good people, will only keep growing with the bad people. Let me compare marijuana. Okay. And just to go off track a little bit, good marijuana you can buy now. The government's going to sell it. You can go buy it. It's legal. If you go and you, it, because when the government gets done with it, and by the time they tax it and everything else, the black market will always undersell. Oh, yeah. And the black market will bring in the better marijuana, the more potent marijuana, the marijuana with fentanyl on it. And don't think that's not on there now. It's coming up. But so, so again, that will always exist. The, the bad element will always exist. Mm. I don't think um, gun restrict, gun backgrounds, I'm all for it. Every single law person per, person is. Drug testing, you know, the county exec put that into one of his requirements. I, I don't, how do you argue with the fact that you want to drug test somebody with a gun? You know, so, yeah. but, but there are people that will make that argument. Uh, mm. You know, so when it comes to, I, I give my personal opinions, but my professional opinion, we need to keep people educated. We need to mandate safety, security measures. We need to mandate background checks. We need to mandate, you know, some training on it. I'm all good with that. Right. And I think most good gun owners will tell you that. I don't think banning a gun is the answer. I, I honestly don't. Um, but again, I, I, you know, you, you, they used to say, well, I, I use it for hunting. Well, you, you don't hunt with an assault rifle on, yeah. on Bambi. <laughs> Not to knock the hunters because I, I did hunt once. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's again, it's just it's all about safety. And good gun owners will tell you they're, they're safe. Every single cop that I haven't met it's all about the security of the weapon. They know, their kids know where the guns are, mm. but they know they can't get to them and they know they shouldn't touch it. Yeah. You know, there's a, um, a theory, educate your kids early on the weapon that's in the home, not later. Mm. I was one of these, I never wore it in my house. I, it was in my bag before I came in the door. My kids never saw it. And I think when they were about 14 or 15, okay, now I'm gonna show them, you know, right. dad, you're a cop, we never see your gun. So here's, here's what here's where my gun is. Here's what my gun does, mm -hmm. and and it's very important that you know I don't tell them where I keep it, but I did tell them that I you know it's here and it's with me almost always. If I'm going out, I'm taking my gun with me. Right. If I'm if I'm going to be home, my gun will be in the house, but it'll be secure. It won't be left for them to grab and God forbid hurt themselves right. or another. When when cops in general are off duty, are they supposed to carry their gun? They're supposed to. Yes, we're supposed to take action twenty four seven. You know we 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 require you. You took an oath to protect and serve. It doesn't stop when you sign off duty. You know, we, we, and that's why we, we criticize you as a police officer when you step out your professional conduct off duty. You are held to a higher standard. Uh, and, and it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough nut for a cop to have. Yeah. Think of what they do all day long from delivering babies to handling yeah. shootings and homicides and suicides and everything else. Mm. And then they go home and they have to maintain that professional standard. They're out there in the public. They can't be getting falling down drunk, you know, with a gun hanging on. That God forbid. Yeah. And again, they, they get dealt with. We we discipline our officers when they act inappropriate off duty. Right now, we tell them carry your gun all the time off duty. If you're going to a bar and yeah. you're going to have a couple of drinks and you got a driver and everything else, good. God bless you. Have right. a nice time. Right. Leave the gun home, locked and secured. Yeah. Don't take yeah. it. Right. And and you shouldn't. And and we know that. Our young cops especially know that. But again, we get guys that make mistakes. They didn't intend to go out drinking, and next thing you know, I'm in this position. Same with driving drunk. I got a car outside. Do I get in that car, or do I call that Uber? Call the Uber. Right. You'll, you'll have a better day the next day. Yeah. You might have a hangover, but you'll get you'll you'll get, yeah. you'll get home safe. And and but the only the only problem with that is that somebody's trying to make that determination while they're already drunk. That that that's. <laughs> I tell my kids you know all the I mean? time, and and I'm listen. I failed myself many times in life. Have a plan. What's your plan? Tell me where you're going. Tell me what you're doing. How you getting there? How you getting home? Yeah. My yeah. daughter went to an island game. Thought she understood the new the new rail system. She went in, had a good time at the game. Got on the train. Ended up in Jamaica Station. Missed the train going back, and she's standing on that platform uh -huh. in Jamaica at one o'clock in the morning. I the worst nightmare. Oh, I jumped yeah. in a car and I drove into Jamaica. I okay. said, "Don't get off the platform till I'm here." Yeah. And then move quickly down. And I went and picked her up, but. Again, you know, in the city cops, they do a great job from what they have to deal with. 
um, and 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 very proud of 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 Commissioner Sewell and everything she's done after leaving us here in Nassau yeah. County. She's doing a great job. God bless her, and, and we wish her well. But you know, the same thing is there's a bad element. You know, that especially hangs around platforms and trains yeah. at night, looking at young girls coming off the station, m- maybe had a couple of drinks with them. That's where they take advantage. So yeah. have a plan, be prepared, and you'll have a better evening. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good advice. Um, all right. I, I, t- I just started making notes on it. Um, home protection. Now, people, of, of course, the alarm systems and the ring cameras, that's, that's probably brought it down a bit yep as far as um w- people are thinking about would you advise people to get a shotgun for their homes so i would advise people first to always do what protects yourself first of all lock your house up secure your windows especially when it's the season's warm now right yeah. so close your window before you go on the first floor leave the second floor that's fine if they make entry they make entry doorbell ring i'm not advertising a doorbell ring this right. is not the pitch right? Right, right, right everybody should have a doorbell ring not only that i watch my kids come in I watch packages being delivered. I get to watch and if somebody broke into my house, front door and the back, I got it covered besides right. cameras on my house. All of that is not going to stop the bad guy, right. but it'll help catch the bad guy. And they, and sign up for the law enforcement package where you give the video to us. at your. Re, you'll get requested every time, but give us the video so we can get it out. So uh, having a gun in your home, again, if you can handle the gun, yeah. you've been trained on the gun, and you secure your weapon properly, Sure, I, I have no problem defending your home. Right, right. But I, I just think that people are are thinking that to resort to that because, again, like you said, yeah, the ring will show you who did it, and what, but it's not going to, you know, if somebody's determined to get into my house, the ring is not going to stop. No, and let me emphasize this. Anytime you're getting robbed, give them the money. Right. Let if Anytime they're breaking out, let them take what they want. Your va- your life is not value is more important than any is more important than any piece of property in that house. Let it go. We'll catch them. Yeah. We'll get them, and yeah. we'll get it back. Um, I think one of the interesting things, technology wise, is you know they have those fobs now for cars. Yep. Um, they um, people leave them by their front doors if they don't leave it in the car. They leave it, but th- those things are broadcasting, and yep. people can read those signals. We don't see that out here yet, but that's true. So what we say to you now is put it in a secondary room. Just put it, if it can't see it, then then it won't stop it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're definitely going to come back next week. We're going to do another. Okay. So my guest today has been Nassau County Commissioner of Police, Mr. Patrick J. Ryder. Uh, We do have so much to talk about. So he just said he's going to come back next week. So tune back in next week, of course, for more on the Nassau County Police Department issues that matter to you. But the clock on the wall says it's time for this week's Long Island News to get on out of here. I'm Bill McIntyre. Remember, you can listen to us by searching for this week's Long Island News wherever you listen to podcasts. And we are right here every Friday on the radio at 3 p.m. on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.